Hello and welcome to this lightning talk entitled Arms Wide Open, Building an Inclusive Open Education Week at a Southeastern University. My name is Chelsea Dixon and I am the Scholarly Communications Librarian at Kennesaw State University. KSU is a member of the University System of Georgia and is an R2 institution. We are a large public university located in the suburbs of the metro Atlanta area of Georgia with two campuses in Kennesaw and Marietta and currently enrollment sits at just over 41,000 students. So I have my MS degree in Library and Information Studies and another MS in Information Technology and I regularly host events and programming for national weeks such as Open Access Week, Open Education Week, and Fair Use Week. I work with Affordable Learning Georgia, which is an initiative of Galileo, as the designated KSU Library Champion to advocate for affordable course materials. And if you have any questions about the information presented today, please feel free to email me, and my institutional email address is there on the screen. So let's get started. In this lightning talk, we'll discuss issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion within the open education movement. I'll provide examples of my work in crafting, creating, and hosting an inclusive open education week experience at KSU, and this will hopefully inspire you to cultivate a sense of community during educational programming events at your own institution. To set the foundation, I'll provide a brief overview of open education week. So Open Education Week is an international event celebrated by educators around the world, and KSU is one of many institutions that participate. In a nutshell, this week promotes the positive effects of open education on teaching and learning, and in so doing, it advocates for the use of open educational resources and other open projects, such as open pedagogy. It's typically celebrated annually during the first full week of March. However, this year, KSU celebrated at the end of the month from the 28th through the 30th of March 2022. To give a bit of background on how Open Education Week 2022 at KSU came together, it all began with a project proposal. The proposal included logistics, which allowed me to focus and delegate tasks, with a timeline that clearly outlined projected start and completion dates. This helped me organize my thoughts on one document and helped my committee and I examine DEI issues broadly and plan with them in mind. Speaking of my committee, it's a tremendous amount of work to create, facilitate, and host a full week's worth of activities and presentations single-handedly. So working with a committee that is fully supportive of you and your ideas is paramount to success. I received help from three colleagues with different areas of expertise and from different departments within the library system, and members included our Institutional Repository Supervisor, our Institutional Repository Specialist, and our Research and Scholarship Team Program Assistant. We as a committee delineated our roles, including moderator, host, and tech backup, and we picked Microsoft Teams as our platform for each virtual session. Once we had our proposal solidified, we began contacting presenters and speakers to make our programming ideas a reality. We sent emails of inquiry to potential speakers and presenters that we identified rather than sending out a call for proposals to ensure we didn't have the same speakers as last year and to nudge those experts that are reluctant to share their OER successes. Next, we finalized the schedule and slotted our presenters into place. We decided to host one pre-recorded session that attendees could view at any time during the week, which outlined our plans and included a brief introduction to the open education movement. We had eight total synchronous sessions and they were scheduled throughout the day to accommodate schedules. This landing page on my Open Educational Resources Library Guide is where I listed our full schedule with dates, times, presenters, and abstracts of each session. As you can see, we incorporated an ocean theme, and this page is also fully accessible to those internal and external to KSU. Utilizing Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, all graphics were inspected to ensure they met accessibility requirements and links were properly displayed. Throughout our planning, my committee and I were always cognizant of DEI issues within the open education movement. Most of us know that open educational resources, the foundation of the open education movement, support textbook affordability. But open education goes far beyond free textbooks, as it also supports diversity. While OERs themselves are not automatically deemed diverse, they can be used to promote diversity and inclusion within academia as they allow creators and users to remix and revise textbooks into diverse, inclusive, and accessible materials for a wide range of student audiences. Our programming for Open Education Week was designed to align with those values of diversity. We structured our events so that audience members had a variety of different presentation topics to choose from. We also incorporated various session formats and presentation styles. For example, our OER mini bootcamp presenters used a fun and interactive program called Kahoot to engage with their audience during the beginning of their session. Then our speakers performed real-time searching for OERs and open materials. 
We hosted a student panel in which one undergraduate and one graduate student were interviewed by a moderator. Additionally, we facilitated Ask an Expert sessions in which OER faculty champions were spotlighted and discussed their recent OER creations. Mixed in were traditional presentations too, and our speakers ranged in age and career stage from undergraduate student to storied professor. So audience members received information from different and diverse viewpoints, which we hoped enriched their experience. We were also mindful of equity. As I mentioned before, we included presenters from a wide range of backgrounds so that we could offer programming to audience members with diverse needs. We knew that not everyone is an expert, nor is everyone a beginner, so we broke our programs down into knowledge categories. Our sessions on Monday were geared towards individuals with beginner knowledge, and we called this collection the OER Tide Pool, in which those with little to no OER knowledge could splash around and get their feet wet in this field. On Tuesday, intermediate OER users and novices who might want to learn more were invited to attend sessions which waded a bit deeper into the open education waters and covered topics like Creative Commons licenses and copyright, open pedagogy, and original OER creation. Lastly, on Wednesday, we jumped into the deep end so experts had the opportunity to discuss and learn about topics like accessibility, OER grant writing and applications, and they heard from an OER faculty champion who has created multiple OERs from scratch for three different courses. So we had something for everyone. We also ensured that live captioning was available for everyone attending the live sessions, and we included polished captions on our recordings, which are freely available online via Kaltura Media Space. Ultimately, we provided equitable access to everyone, and invitations were sent internally and externally to KSU. We marketed our programming on multiple listservs and received interest from across the nation. Our lowered barriers, like not charging for attendance, allowed us to reach many people, though we know there are still barriers to attendance, particularly for those that lack access to the internet. Equal and equitable access is a core tenet of the open education movement and should be one of the main motivators in the pursuit of open educational resources within the classroom. In terms of OERs, students benefit from equitable access, receiving course materials on day one of their classes without being forced to make a choice between expensive textbooks and other college necessities. We wanted to bring the spirit of equality and equity to our programming. And of course, inclusivity. Our overarching goal was to provide a warm and welcome environment for each and every speaker, presenter, and attendee. As I mentioned before, we tapped presenters to ensure we'd have a rich and varied selection of presentation content, and presenters were encouraged to incorporate their own perspectives. And we examined our biases and strived not to discriminate based on any factors. We hosted sessions which really highlighted our commitment to inclusion, and we felt it extremely important to allow students to have a voice during this week of programming as their voices are often unheard or ignored, so we really wanted to listen to their opinions and get their takes. We wanted to include them in the movement and give them agency in their education, a topic which our speakers discussed wonderfully in their session about open pedagogy. We also wanted to include those with diverse learning styles and disabilities, which we felt was also addressed in our session about applying Affordable Learning Georgia's Accessibility Evaluation Rubric, which is a great tool to help educators ensure their open course materials are also accessible. Because affordable course materials have the potential to be accessible to those with disabilities and inclusive for those usually underrepresented. And we hope that by spotlighting these voices and groups, we can give them a sense of empowerment. Overall, we deemed Open Education Week 2022 at KSU a success. We were able to entice a total of 115 registrations and 62 attendees to enjoy our programming. But of course, we're looking forward to next year and the ways in which we can be more diverse, equitable, and inclusive. We learned quite a few lessons during our planning process, and here are some significant takeaways and pieces of advice. Be aware of DEI and how this impacts open education and influences your own practices and processes. Diversity is integral to a successful program. And know that you probably have an inherent bias, acknowledge it, then try to overcome it. Be at peace with the fact that that's going to be a work in progress, not perfect on your first try. Be mindful of accessibility, pay attention to the feedback you receive, and don't just hear but actually listen to critiques and suggestions. Celebrate and accommodate the different needs of your audience, and most importantly, welcome everyone with open arms and lower barriers to attendance so we can truly share knowledge and build a global community. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or would just like to chat about all things open, please send me an email at cdicks05 at kennesaw.edu. Thanks again and enjoy OpenCon Cleveland.